happened to real economy. This week we are in Athens, taking a pulse of the Greek economy and to see where it's headed. On the show today, we'll analyze the challenges of the terms of Greece's bailout with Administrative Reform Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis. We'll also track the EU task force on the ground and explore the Troika strategy. We then look at the economics of investing in Greece. It's been a difficult road for the Greek people. To prevent debt default, they've had to take bailouts. For bailouts, they've had to meet tough conditions on reform. Take a look at the timeline of the crisis and you realize just how long Greece's problems have been going on. On a rocky road as far back as 2004, Greece had a budget black hole in 2009. Its credit ratings were slashed. At the beginning of 2010, the government announced tough austerity measures. Fears on a default on Greece's debts prompt the Troika to step in with a 110 billion euro aid package. A second bailout was then agreed. Eurozone leaders agreed a 50% write-off for debts. The Prime Minister announced a referendum on the rescue package. Criticism forced him to resign. In 2012, Greece reached a debt swap deal which cut its debt load in half. After two elections, a coalition formed a fresh government. It was given a two-year fiscal adjustment extension. Reform measures will cut several thousand jobs this year. State broadcaster ERT was shut down, causing the coalition government's junior partner to pull its two ministers from the cabinet. For keeping the reforms on track, Greece secured a rescue fund of 6.8 billion euros. In its sixth year of recession, we know Greece's GDP has been steeply declining. The EU, the IMF and the ECB have all been pushing for reform, but that's really hard to achieve in a country where unemployment is spiking and access to basics like healthcare has become near impossible. Sebastian Lebelzik shadowed the task force on the ground while analysing the Troika's strategies and solutions. The offices of the Greek government, where the Secretary General meets every week with task force members. Its work ensures the 183.5 billion euros are spent wisely. The meeting is normally off limits to cameras, however, Today we're allowed to observe. We try to reform the economy and the whole Greek society. And uh, in, this, in this endeavor, uh, the, the help given to us by the Commission and uh, uh, by the task force is extremely valuable. So I have to, to speed up. For this, of course, we need time. You understand that you cannot. Uh, solve or, or remedy the problems uh, of generations uh, uh, in, in a matter of several months. Reform takes time. It's a difficult dilemma for Athens and the task force, but it's what Greece's creditors demand. The Troika includes the European Union, the European Central Bank and the IMF. The Troika sets targets for Greece. The task force helps Greece hit them. The Troika continually raises the bar to help the Greek government. The official program of assistance ends in a year. Shock therapy is not over yet. After recapitalizing the banking system at a cost of 50 billion euros, Greece's creditors hope to raise 2.6 billion euros this year from privatization. Next on the Troika list, reform of the central administration. La Commission a ce rôle. The Commission is playing two roles at the same time, the firefighter and the architect. Usually the architect will arrive after the fire. Here we don't have the time to follow the traditional model. Both teams have to work at the same time. Economic adjustment, structural reforms and technical assistance. The most progress has been made in just a year but there is still a long way to go. The government and the task force hope that Greece will balance its accounts and reach a primary surplus by the end of the year. This excludes the cost of servicing its debt. Athens hopes that when it reaches this milestone, it will get further financial support from its creditors. 
The Troika has already disbursed 210 billion euros to Greece since 2010 based on certain reforms. Now, some of those reforms fall under the purview of the Ministry of Administrative Reform, headed up by Kyriakos Mitsotakis. I caught up with the man and put to him some of the questions top of mind for Greeks and the international community. Why do you fire people? They end up on the streets. There's no room for more catastrophes. Workers' rights are bordering unacceptable. How could you go to a school and see children with no teachers? Mr. Mitsotakis, the question on a lot of Greek people's mind is why the public sector and why 25,000 jobs on, in the mobility program? What's your answer? The truth is that unfortunately over the past three years very little had happened uh, on this front and there's an explanation uh, for this. I mean the public sector was in a sense the last uh, uh, bastion of old patronage politics. Uh, unfortunately that was one of the reasons why the country got into this mess in the first place. You've had difficulties in participation in the mobility program. What guarantee is there that this one will work? Because of the clientelistic nature of the Greek state, we have a lot of people doing sort of back office jobs, sort of protected uh, from, the, from the heavy workload, then we don't but have These enough. are also people at the end of the day who have been placed there by politicians. Uh, let, let me make it clear, if the transfers cannot happen in a voluntary way, they have, it, they have to happen uh, in, a, in a mandatory uh, fashion. No one uh, is sort of uh, uh, guaranteed that they will do the, sort of the same job but for life these days, I mean, the, the rules of the game have changed. What confuses me is if you go through with this plan, you have also got a target of 15,000 people over the next, this year and next year to be fired, but 15,000 will replace them. How are you bringing them, the numbers down? We have an obligation to bring down the size of our uh, public administration by 150,000 uh, employees over six years. We are achieving that target through natural attrition. We did shut down our state broadcaster, which uh, was not an easy uh, decision, but it did result in significant numbers of layoffs. The, the sort of 15,000 target uh, for uh, firing people was a target set by the Troika. The 15,000 uh, exits um, uh, do not contribute to the absolute numbers because we can hire new people. If you compare the progress of Greece versus, say, for example, Ireland, do you think Greece is too far behind? Uh, well, Greece had to, uh, had to make the most serious fiscal adjustment and, uh, uh, of all the other countries, uh, and it paid a very heavy price. The IMF itself acknowledged the fact that the program was not properly designed from the beginning. Who do you blame? Uh, some blame also needs to be placed on our side. Had we, for example, moved, as I told you before, more aggressively uh, in, uh, in uh, addressing the problem of pu public administration reform, at the beginning of the program, maybe the results would have been different, because the great problem that Greece is, is facing right now is how it can pull itself out of this uh, recessionary uh, trap. Uh, I mean, this is a depression. All of these reforms, can it actually bring the debt load down? If we achieve a primary surplus on the fiscal side, and if we move aggressively on our reform agenda on the other, uh, I am sure that uh, you know, our, uh, uh, our creditors will uh, uh, at some point uh, reconsider uh, our situation. But what's the plan for creating jobs? Well, jobs will only be created through private investments right now. Public investment can only play a very small um, part in this. Uh, we've had significant interest both by foreign and by domestic investors. Um, uh, and investments have been taking place. The fact that we recapitalized our banks was critical in terms of providing, starting to provide liquidity for the real economy. We're reforming, completely reforming our tax code, making it much simpler. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but I'm saying that there is a clear plan. Last year, the Athens Stock Exchange saw a steady stream of money. But foreign direct investment has failed to see the same level of enthusiasm. Unlike the past, when you saw companies like Costco from China invest heavily, a state asset sale plan has struggled to see buyers. Melina Tushidu investigates the bureaucratic red tape, welcoming investors. The process of establishing the business park started over six years ago. We've been given licenses from the Ministry of Development, the Ministry of the Environment, the Archaeological Office, the military authorities and others. However, the project cannot start because of a legal dispute with the two ministries. The story of the business park of Elefsina is typical of the bureaucratic labyrinth that keeps investments away from Greece. 
Foreign investment in Greece is being strangled by the red tape involved in getting business licenses. This bureaucracy adds up to between 7 and 16 percent of the total investment. Greece needs new innovative products to become more competitive and bypass the recession. Despite the complex business environment, Greek scientists are doing just that and making the most of the European funds. We're in Ioannina, the capital of Epirus, one of the poorest regions in Greece. The Department of Biomedical Research is working on a new field, regenerative medicine. With funding of 127,000 euros from the EU and 22,000 euros from Greece, Dimitris Kouroupas returned to Greece from Britain to work on the project. This is the first time for this promising and innovative sector of regenerative medicine. This is one of 181 priority projects the European Commission is funding with 11.5 billion euros. These projects are considered very important in Greece's development. Regenerative medicine is growing and developing through technology and investment. If we don't take full advantage now, we'll end up importing these products at great expense in 10 years. To attract investment, whether foreign, direct or domestic, Greece needs to minimize its bureaucratic red tape. That's a wrap on Real Economy. We'll see you right back here in September after a short summer break when we'll get a pulse of the German economy pre-elections. Until then, thanks for watching. Goodbye.